All right, and we're live. Uh, 132nd installment of the Unplugged Alpha podcast series, a little thing I've been working on for some time. Just build it on the book. Um, if you haven't read the Unplugged Alpha, it's on Amazon. There's two editions. The second edition is the one that you want. Dive into it. It'll give you a little bit of framework uh, around what I'm talking about with these podcasts. There's over 100 episodes. I've done over 100 episodes prior on a similar podcast I worked with a clinical psychologist on. Uh, called Before the Trainwreck. Those are mostly on the uh, Entrepreneurs and Cars channel. And, uh, you know, everything out there in between with the interviews and stuff like that. So I've done quite a bit of putting myself out there and answering questions and guys calling in. And there's always critics. And I'm good with that. I like uh, criticism, useful criticism, intelligent criticism. Um, my general stance on criticism, which is what the show is about, is responding to it, is... Um, you know, criticize my work, um, uh, be a hater if you want, but um, why are you criticizing it? Uh, and what is your better solution? Uh, I don't often get people calling in on my shows and saying, hey, you know, you're, you're wrong about this, here's why, and here's my better solution. So this was an opportunity for those that uh, don't want to call in on a show to just write a comment. Uh, so I posted the, uh, the ask for the feedback in, um, I don't know, like all the community tabs on my YouTube channels, on Twitter, even on Facebook. So I'll get through as many of these as I can. I, I think there's some good ones here. Um, there's some that are, it seems like they just maybe watched a, a clip or a reel or a TikTok or something that one of my editors has put out for like 24 seconds and they've drawn a conclusion. So I'll expand on those as best as I can. Um, so let's get started. Let's let's dive in this and do as many as we can. Uh, do me a solid, guys. As you're coming in for the uh, for the sake of the algorithms and to help uh, build the awareness and reach of the channel, make sure you uh, hit the like button, use the comment section to engage, and uh, there's the opportunity to join the membership on the YouTube channel uh, to participate in live chat. It also gives you access to most of the talks that I had at my one percent forum earlier this year in Toronto. Uh, the event was a great success. I just got off the phone with my uh, planner about an hour ago. We're working on next year's event, uh, which will probably be in the wintertime in a warmer climate. Um, so for those of you that didn't attend and are channel members, you'll get an opportunity to watch uh, at least most of the talks that were at the event. We get some insight on some cool topics that were uh, discussed there. So one of the other benefits of being a channel member as well. And for some reason, YouTube keeps asking me to push channel membership because it helps grow the channel and algorithms and all that stuff. So I created a very, very basic tier. It's 99 cents a month. It's like cheaper than most coffees anywhere in the world. So uh, yeah, do that to support the channel. Thank you so much. Let's get started. Um, I'll throw them up on the screen to sort of go through these with you. I'll start with the community tab of the EIC channel. And uh, let's just respond to these one by one. I've, I've, I've breezed through quite a few um, and uh, tried, tried to hard a few or you know, just make sure I uh, made them pop or stand out. Uh, okay, which one we got to do here? What is the clip channel? That's that one over there. Okay, so let's do it this way. This should be big enough for you guys to read as well if I do this. Yeah, that works, I think. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, um, okay, so let's go with the top comments first because those will probably have the most likes. Uh, this is just thanks. Okay, so the first one here, uh, criticism from this uh, viewer says, so again, I did it in, in, in three parts. So just to recap, I said, comment below with what, you're, what, what you take an issue with, why you take an issue with that, and what your solution to the problem that I addressed is. So basically a three-part bit. So I was hoping to keep this clean and tidy as much as possible. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining the channel membership. I appreciate it, brother. Um, so this guy said, uh, staying away from marriage or anything that looks like marriage to the government. So what I've stated uh, many times and in my book, there's an entire chapter in the book that uh, breaks down, and again, this is a second edition, this is the one that you want, that breaks down um, why smart men don't marry today. Um, I'm not opposed to marriage, I'm not opposed to uh, women, having relationships with women, having children even. What I'm opposed to is living in such a way that the state makes decisions on your life. For a very long time as men, we had uh, authority and responsibility in our own household. Today, if you get married in a way that, that looks like marriage to the state, which is hostile towards men, which I explain in great detail in my book, 
and there's lots of podcasts that I've done to cover this, so you can literally search the channel to get the explanation under it. So if this is one of the scenarios where, you know, dude watches a 24 second TikTok clip and, and, and draws that conclusion, there's more to uh, grasp. Um, so again, you know, my position is don't live in a way that invites the state in your home to make decisions about access to your kids, what happens to your wealth, um, her ability to leverage or utilize things like false TV charges. Anybody that's been through a divorce is going to tell you that the woman they married is not the same woman that they divorced. It's a complex scenario. It's hostile towards fathers. They generally get a raw deal. Women get most of the custody orders more of the time. They uh, initiate divorce most of the time. Women get bored far quicker in marriages than men do. So there's a whole stack of reasons. And I get into, again, all the details in a chapter in my book. So if you're confused or unfamiliar with it, just get the book. It's on Amazon. And when you get through the book, please do leave a written review letting uh, other guys know what value you got from the book. So he says, I 100% agree on your assessment of the danger. The solution, which will work in the short term, may ultimately lead to more betas and 304s growing up without men in the house and without seeing a strong, healthy relationship in action, with the family unit being a necessity for a healthy society. Uh, according to many, I believe the wholesale abandon of it in order to protect young men will lead to more negatives Excuse me for the next generation. Um, again, I did not say do not have kids or deal with women. I'm saying don't live in a way that looks like marriage. You can move. I've made this recommendation several times. Move to a place that's a lot friendlier to fathers. Uh, Canada's pretty consistent across the board. A lot of my views, most of my views come from the States. Um, there are friendlier states to fathers and more hostile states towards fathers. So one of the recommendations that I've made for those of you that are looking to uh, raise a family and have children, I agree it should be done in a two-parent ha household. Um, single-parent single households are a disaster. We've seen all the data on this. Uh, unfortunately, the vast majority of them are single-mother households, not single-father households. It seems like, according to the data, data single fathers do a far better job than single mothers. But the vast majority of things like uh, those that are incarcerated, teenage pregnancies, uh, shitty high school grades, gang activity, suicide attempts, successful suicides, all of these things are very highly correlated towards a single parent household. So he's absolutely right and I agree with that and I've said that many, many times, it's better to do it that way. You can move from a shitty state to a better state. Um, I've covered that in several of my podcasts before as well. Uh, it's a moving target though. So legislation that might be friendly today might be unfriendly in seven years time. If um, you know the pendulum swings the other way and the policymakers change the legislation. But currently as it stands right now, Florida, Kentucky, uh, Michigan, California is an interesting one because it's friendly towards fathers in custody, but it's unfriendly in the sense of alimony. So if you've been married for 10 years, it could be alimony for life, um, which doesn't really encourage her to work if you're a wealthy guy and you know she can stay at home and just collect the checks monthly. So there's that problem. Um, so he proposes a solution, prenuptial financial and arbitrage agreements, irrevocable trust and other legal tools, although they aren't perfect, can work to level the playing field in an extent I believe legitimate number of men would appreciate seeing some legal and financial guests. I've, I've, I've had them on, guy. Um, I've had lawyers on several times. I've had explanations. Like The thing with YouTube is, look, the, there's, there's probably 1,500 videos on the EIC channel. There's close to 1,000 probably on this channel by now. Um, there's a lot of, like there's a big catalog of videos. The problem with, with video platforms is they only recommend new videos they'll very rarely take even evergreen content from two years ago and put it in front of you and say, hey, you watch this video from Rich on why marriage is a bad idea. You might wanna watch this video now on some potential solutions to that that he recorded two years ago. They don't do that shit. So it's on you as a consumer of the content to dive through the catalog yourself to find the other stuff that you're looking for that's relevant. So I'd encourage you if you like my content and watch my videos and the podcast, Go back and look for things that are relevant or just search on the channel. So um, if you use a browser, then there's a search function so you can search the entire channel. And if there's a topic that interests you, let's say divorce, for example, just type in divorce and it'll show you every single podcast on the channel that deals with that topic. Just look at the title. I'm very intentional about the titles and the thumbnails to make sure that the content, once you click on it, very closely relates to exactly what uh, the title and the, the thumbnail says so that you get what you expect. I like to, um, you know, under promise and over deliver. That's just how I roll in, in, in business and in life. Uh, anyway, so he goes on to say, uh, beyond 
uh, prenups, arbitrage agreements, irrevocable trusts, legal twos, blah, blah, blah. I believe a legitimate number of men would appreciate seeing some legal financial guests. Okay, just covered that. Or if there is someone who believes they can have an alternative system that will work equivalent to the nuclear family, I believe a lot of men will be receptive to those ideas. Uh, really appreciate the quality of your content, Rich, neither critic nor hater. I just like to see an expansion of guidance on form. Uh, again, you know, I've covered this many, many times. Maybe the quickest way, if you're not that interested in watching longer form content, <clears throat> go to my clips channel, just Rich Cooper Clips, and search Rich Cooper Clips for marriage or divorce. And you'll find loads and loads of uh, bite sized clips. They're usually somewhere between five and 10 minutes long, addressing that specific topic with a solution. Very, very quickly, move to a place that's not hostile towards fathers. Uh, definitely have some kind of a legal agreement in place, a, a prenup and or a postnup. Um, one of the best things that you can do to avoid problems, but it comes with another set of problems later on down the road, is don't marry a chick that's beneath you financially. Uh, if you marry a chick on an equal level, then there's less to fight over. So if you marry a chick that's on the same level financially and you live in a state that's not hostile towards fathers, you're not going to have too much of a problem if you have to untie the knot, which is going to happen 50% of the time if we're being honest. Um, that's because you're making about the same amount of money. So women that get into marriages where they're the breadwinner and he's like Mr. Mom and stays home and he doesn't make money, which very rarely happens, by the way, uh, they're often their big complaint is, well, it doesn't just happen to men, it happens to women too. So the, the laws are basically written to protect the uh, individual that makes less money in the household. Because of hypergamy and women marry across and up on a socioeconomic scale for the most part, that generally tends to be mad like 90, 95% of the time. So there's, so there's those recommendations. Uh, go to where you're treated better, basically, is what it boils down to. Let's go to the next one because we got a whole bunch here. Uh, so Zumbot says uh, his criticism is an unplugged man must have a nice car. I've never said that. Uh, I'm a car guy. I've always been a car guy. I like motorcycles and fast cars. So that's where I put the money that I uh, make that I like to spend on cool shit. It's just it's just my pastime. Some people like, I don't know, other things, whatever, whatever floats your boat. It just so happens to be that, you know, I wrote a book called The Unplugged Alpha. My name is Rich Cooper. I like nice cars. Maybe he's connecting the dots that way. So you do you. You know, you want nice cars, buy a nice car. I don't give a fuck at the end of the day. Uh, this is not true. An unplugged alpha should have the means to buy a nice car, but actually having one is disadvantages. Okay, so this is one of the um, maybe notions of it's a depreciating asset. Let's see. Nice cars attract men and garbage gold digging women. Uh, not true. Well, it's part. It's partially true, actually. Uh, nice cars mostly attract men. I've never filling up the car at a gas station at a rally ever, ever, ever once had a hot woman approach me. It's always dudes. Nice car. Da, 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 what is it? Like they just ask you questions and then they usually ask you like what you do for a living. Uh, so he's absolutely right that it mostly attracts men, but I don't buy nice cars to attract women. I buy nice cars because I legitimately like fast cars. I like doing rallies. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a whole bunch of the road trips that I've done. There's like uh, story catalogs that are archived there uh, as highlights or whatever they're, you know, they're called. Uh, it's my shtick. It's always been that way. That's, I mean, that's why I started the channel Entrepreneurs in Cars, right? Anyway, he says, and garbage gold digging women. Um, not true. Uh, I've, I've met lots of pretty fantastic women, um, in my life, uh, that weren't gold digging whores or, 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 or came to me because of the car, right? Um, a car is a, um, I think for women, it's more of a, um, uh, like a status symbol, you know, in some sense or regard, it's a visual representation of your success, which isn't a bad thing. You can visually represent your success with a nice watch. I'm not a watch guy. I don't even wear a watch most of the time. Um, like there's some guys that wear watches that are worth uh, way more than my car. You can't drive it. It doesn't take you on road trips. It's not fun. You just look at it and it tells the time and it looks pretty. So that's, that's their shtick. Um, success does attract women. A portion of the women that you attract will be gold diggers. There's no question about that. Uh, so unless you only want to spin plates, it's better to be an unplugged alpha in a Toyota than a Porsche. Okay. I disagree. If you're a guy that likes fast cars and enjoys a finely made automobile, you will buy the Porsche over the Toyota. Um, in fact, most guys that have the Porsche probably also have the Toyota. The Toyota is a reliable daily driver. In fact, when I watch car videos on YouTube, I'm often looking at the new 4Runner, the new Lexus GX, you know, the new uh, Land Cruiser, and I'm thinking to myself, I'll, I'll drive that daily, put the miles on it, beat the shit out of it, I don't care. 
and the Porsche is a toy for the road trips. Um, it's totally fine to have both if you have the beans. Men will ignore you and attractive quality women that are worth inviting into your life will never think of flirting with a guy because of his car. In fact, see, this reads to me like a guy that doesn't have a lot of money and is more envious of success and cars and is trying to rationalize. Like I always say, guys like to complicate their life and justify why. There's no guys in my circle that I do rallies with that is as he's describing. Um, it comes off as envious. Uh, life, in fact, they're likely to get repulsed by nice cars because they know the game you're playing. These women will be attracted to you. Other nice cars have never repulsed women at all. They, like I've never had a chick that, that got into a nice car and be like, "Your nice car really repulses me and turns me off." Not fucking once. This is this is clearly coming from a place of envy. Uh, these women will be attracted to your other alpha features, not involving cars. The solution is to drive a modest vehicle. Let the boys with Lambos be bait for the gold diggers. Okay, well, it's, that's your opinion, but you're wrong. Uh, wisdom, harsh truth. Okay, so here's one about spinning plates. Um, so, spinning plates is dating multiple women simultaneously in a non, non-monogamous fashion. I've talked about it in videos many, many times. I've talked about it when guys call in. I've talked about it in my book, The Unplugged Alpha. All that does is it gives you contrast. If you're dating and... Uh, I'll try to get to the uh, like super chats that pop up as they come, guys. Thanks for those. As you're dating, most guys, when they date, are looking for a girlfriend. Uh, they want a, a nice gal that brings peace in his life, that is a compliment to his life, uh, isn't the focus, doesn't cause stress, is respectful. That's usually what I find is the attention of most guys dating. Uh, myself inclusively, you know, for the most part, there's been times where I've just been like, I don't want to deal with a girl on a long-term basis because I'm getting too many headaches. That also happens too. Um, so the notion of compare and contrast by deal, dealing with multiple women simultaneously is a useful tool. It's a valuable tool and it helps you understand good from bad. You can't, so if you're car shopping, going to the notion of cars, for example, you can't decide if a car is a good car or a bad car. If you just go and drive one car, if you're in the category for a five seater SUV, for example, uh, Toyota has a whole bunch of cars. Kia has, has a whole bunch of cars. Hyundai has a whole bunch of cars. Honda has a whole bunch of, like they have multiple cars in their entire lineup. The German brands have multiple cars. You're not going to know what's a good fit for you if you don't go and check out all of those cars. Nobody goes out and just buys the first car that they're entertaining. I've said this many times before. Guys will spend way more time researching fuel economy, range, uh, headroom, uh, seating capacity, shoulder room, leg room in the back. They'll, they'll spend days researching this information, but they'll marry the first girl that touches her pee-pee. Okay? This is an incredibly bad mistake, and it's why you need to entertain your options. Because at the end of the day as well too, guys, women are also entertaining their options. The notion of spinning plates is a tool out of the women's tool chest. Women have always entertained multiple options simultaneously when it comes to men. Again, they're hypergamous. They want to date across and up on the socioeconomic scale. And for them to do that, to find the best that they can get, which is what hypergamy boils down to, is they will date multiple guys simultaneously. They just do it. They're not always sleeping with them all. And I don't tell guys to sleep with all the women either. It's like, you know, you do as you please. You know, if you want to do it, do it in a respectful, intelligent, sort of, you know, safe way, uh, you know, to be an idiot about it. Uh, but that's what it is. So going back to his thing, uh, your advice to spin plates. Seemingly forever, he says. I'm sure there are some low-value women that will tolerate sharing a man with other women. Uh, it's not always low-value women. Sometimes very attractive women will share. Like Anybody that has some experience with, with women will say that, a woman, that, women will, that women prefer to share a high-value alpha rather than sharing a low-value beta male. It's why uh, women will date married men over a uh, guy that lives in his basement with his mom. They don't even look his way, generally speaking. Um, so you're wrong about that, my friend. I would contend that those are women with so low self-worth. That's bullshit. Uh, it's absolutely bullshit. That's not how women operate. You're, you're one of the newer guys to my content. You haven't gone deep enough down the rabbit hole and slightly desperate, also bullshit. That's not accurate either. Uh, also, as you get older, your value will eventually reduce. That's true, as you do get older. Your value as a man does reduce a little bit later than women. I think women peak in their early 20s and men peak in their late 30s, maybe 40-ish or so. Uh, I'm older than that now. So, um, you know, for, for a guy like me, 
to compete against a guy that's like 38 at his peak is going to be more work, obviously. So, uh, yeah, we do our, our value on a sexual marketplace does diminish over time, just at different times. Ultimately, if you don't want to die alone, oh, there's the, okay. So, so, so the whole die alone argument is something that I've dealt with before. Um, I've never done a, you're going to die alone video, so I don't have a title on that, but I've certainly covered this many times. You're going to, you're going to die alone as a bitter old man or some shit like that. Um, a lot of people, okay, look, everybody dies, right? We have absolute 100% certainty that we're going to die. There's very, very, very few uh, people, men and women, that die together, um, holding hands, singing kumbaya in their deathbed side by side. It, it, it just doesn't happen. We all die alone. We all die alone. I know lots of people over the last uh, decade and a half or so, a couple of decades, and they've all died alone. And they've, and they've all had families. They might have had a wife. Uh, they might have had a girlfriend. Um, they all die alone. We all die alone, in fact. Uh, so to say that, you know, you're going to be miserable and die alone by following my advice is absurd. Uh, it's probably wise to pursue either marriage with a prenup if you have assets and wealth to protect. Um, I've covered prenups before very quickly. Uh, prenups lose value over time. For example, um, you have a prenup. You get married, things aren't working out nine years down the road. Um, what will end up happening is women will always do this. Their lawyers always encourage them to try to set aside the prenup. If the conditions of the marriage have changed sufficiently that the conditions at the time of the prenup are no longer relevant. So let's use an example of um, a couple that got bar married. They were both professionals working sort of thing. Uh, they had a couple kids. She became a stay-at-home mom, which uh, seems to be the current trend. Uh, I mean, it's always been the trend. You know, she she really doesn't want to work. She doesn't want to climb the corporate ladder, put in long hours, and do all that bullshit. She she wants to be a mom. So a lot of the time, guys will be like, "Yeah, you know, you stay home and take care of the kids, and I'll bring home the bacon and you cook it up." Only nine or ten years down the road, she gets bored. Something happens. Doesn't matter. But she she wants to untie the knot. If she's been a stay-at-home mom, she's then going to argue, well, the problem is that my skills are no longer relevant and I can't go back into the workforce because I've been a stay-at-home mom for the last uh, 7.8 years. So I need his money. And generally speaking, uh, prenups in that situation aren't very valuable. Um, so like you've got, like talk to a family lawyer in the state that you live in. It varies from state to state and province to province where you're at, but I mean, you know, thinking that a prenup is the solution to all problems is absolutely not true. Um, this is our friend over here with a prenup. Okay, at least a monogamous long-term relationship if you want to have a high-quality woman. Uh, humans aren't monogamous. Uh, there's an entire chapter in my book that talks about the levels of promiscuity that humans operate. Monogamy defined on this planet Earth is male-female together until death. They don't mate with other uh, of the opposite sex. Um, happens mostly in some primates and some birds. I think less than 4% of the living things on this planet are monogamous. Um, humans aren't innately monogamous. We're generally non-monogamous or monogamish. For women, it's usually like one guy at a time. So... When I hear women or anybody argue, well, a monogamous LTR, you're assuming that because you commit to her, she's never going to step out on you, which is not true. Women cheat at least the same amount, if not more than men. There's lots of uh, podcast interviews and uh, therapists and psychotherapists and even lots of Evo psych books have all confirmed the exact same things. Um, Assuming that you commit in a long-term relationship is going to get you monogamy and she'll never step out is total bullshit. Uh, high, high quality women. What I agree with you on is that we need to be as high value as we can, not let ourselves go and pick women very carefully, avoiding all the red flags. Okay, so I mean, I understand your disagreements, but I think you're one of these guys that are probably newer to the channel, my dude. So dig a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole, watch some more videos, read the book, uh, you know, make sure you get in there to understand it. So we've got another criticism here. Uh, this guy says, one, you advise that you can have kids with a woman and not live in a way the state sees as a marriage. Okay, good. We kind of dove into that earlier. Have her in a separate house or condo. Yeah, that's one possibility. Uh, 
I take issue with it because no woman, no matter how base, is going to agree to this. It's not true. There's lots of women that are raising uh, the kids of a man and they don't live under the same roof. Um, it's pretty common in polygyny. It's pretty common in uh, Islam. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, usually what the guy will do is he'll buy, like he treats them all equally. So if he's got four wives, he'll put them all into one house, or, you know, like into their own apartment or their own house or something like that. Um, it's entirely possible and it does happen. You, you haven't read any Evo psych books or anything about culture in different parts of the words, like world. It, it's, it's only in Western culture where couples are told, okay, you like each other, you touch each other's genitals, now you're going to go and get married and go and make babies and buy a house and live together and raise them in that fashion. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very unsuccessful, it's got a horrible success rate. Marriage itself, like as an instrument, like what, what's the failure rate? There's a 50% divorce rate, first time marriage, a second time it's more than 70%. And that doesn't account for the people that stay married that are too cowardly to leave the marriage because they're unhappy. Um, there's a study that I quoted in my book um, where they dealt with uh, couples that were together. I think it was an average of something like eight and a half years or something like that. It's, it's detailed in my book. And they wanted to know how many of them were in a state of love and bliss. And the amount of couples after just over eight years that are in a state of love with one another is less than 13%. The amount of couples that are in a state of bliss, like obsession with one another, like they're, like they're still head over heels, honeymoon phase after eight years is less than 3%. So, you know, saying that um, this works is incredibly, uh, I mean, stick your head in the sand like an ostrich basically and you'll probably get more insight. That's, that's, that's the problem that I generally have when it comes to the uh, critics is they're not willing to take a look at things for as they are. They're, they're drunk on society's lies. They've, they've had a steady diet of Hollywood, marketing, happy wife, happy life, religion, culture, all telling them just man up, be a good man, Wife up that hoe, doesn't matter that she's been with 40 other guys, and buy her a house, run, you know, go and renovate the kitchen, move into the neighborhood that she wants to live into or move her in-laws in or some shit like that. They just tell men to be these useful idiots. And what I do is I'm like, look, there's comforting lies and there's the uncomfortable truth. I'm not going to sell you pretty little lies. I'm going to tell you what happens, what my experience is. I've dealt with hundreds of very successful men that I've coached. I've got very successful men in my community. I've got, I don't know how many podcast episodes where guys have called in. Um, a lot of those were clipped on the Clips channel. The notion that um, everything is just perfect if you just man up and wife her, it doesn't work. And to think that it does is like, it's just ignorant. You're not looking at the facts. Um, so he's criticizing me. Uh, you know how kids are being raised. You're not there. She may also be, see other men with your kids, other men. Uh, no, dude, my dude. Uh, Okay, let me let me put up the ticker here. Um, get on my email list. Uh, where is my ticker for email list? There it is. Okay, get on my email list at entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags. Um, as one example of thousands, um, I did a private Zoom call with Tristan Tate a few years ago, and he was talking about uh, how he has multiple children with multiple women, how he structures it, how they live, how he takes care of their uh, living expenses when he visits them, um, parenting rules, guidance, and like all this sort of stuff that he structures around it. Um, it was an unlisted video. It's on my email list. If you're on my email list, it'll be served to you. Don't email me back and say, send me the video. It's, it's in a sequence, right? There's, there's a whole bunch of emails on my list. Get on the newsletter. It'll be sent to you. Wait for it. Um, the problem that most people have when I start to, you know, look at these criticisms is surface level shit they see the tip of the iceberg and they're like, that's all there is. But there's all this shit beneath the waterline that they're not looking at. You gotta look at the whole picture, my bro. Look at the whole picture. Anyway, he says, number three, I don't have a solution. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks for your criticism but not providing a solution. But I asked you about this a year ago more with a super chat and you said it would be in your course on marriage. My solution is I don't raise kids in the West. Uh, that's one way to do it. Actually. To the point of the course, uh, it is a course that's going to, it's it's a community slash course now. It's going to be launched on school. 
Um, I haven't mentioned this yet, so this will be a first time announcement. We're gonna launch it June 1st. Um, there's tons of material. The reason why we're putting it together is because of stuff like this. The confusion that, that comes from basic 101 questions. Um, answering basic 101 questions about something like, how do you get involved with a woman and live in such a way that you're not risked, but you're still a parent and you have some authority um, and you reduce the potential for uh, getting ground through the divorce machine and all that sort of stuff. All of that stuff is going to be in the school. Uh, the platform's called School. It's um, a platform that Alex Ramosi, I think he invested in recently. And I took a look at it and I think I like the way the uh, structure is. So um, it looks like it's got a great community element. It's got good course elements. It's got monthly opportunities to join in on Zoom calls. All of that will be integrated into it. Uh, but the basics, the 101 of things like fitness, attire, self care, uh, women, you know, dealing with dating, dealing with marriage, uh, unplugged parenting, making money, all of these basics that um, are all over my channels are going to be nicely organized in a course, um, monthly recurring payment. It's not going to be expensive. It's going to be cheap uh, relative to uh, like something like the School of Entrepreneurship, for example. And then you'll be able to dive into all of that, my friend, and, and, and get the clarity that you uh, are looking for. Uh, okay, so criticism from Tyler here says, number one, banging a bunch of women at a time to find the golden goose. I explained that earlier. It's called spinning plates. I didn't say bang them all. Uh, in fact, I would encourage you not to bang them all. Um, if you're a man of means and have options, like you're spoiled for choice, you don't have time to be banging eight women you know, that you're dating or something like that. It's, it's, it's too much work. It's a headache. Um, and you know, like at the end of the day, why? Like, What's the point? You should only be dealing with women on an intimate basis that have strong, genuine, burning desire for you, as I describe in the chapter of my book. So again, this is somebody that's tip of the iceberg, but they haven't gone beneath the surface to look at the other details that I expand on. And again, this will all be explained in a nice, organized way in the School of Unplugging. And if you're on the email list down over here, guys, you'll get first notification when that launches. Again, it's going to be June 1st. Number two, he says, this creates more terrible women to deal with for the other men, adding unnecessary notch counts who are already undes undesirable women, leaving alpha widows in the wakes. Bullshit, again. And here's the other thing too. This assumes that women have no agency and no accountability. Women are the gatekeepers to sex. Men are the gatekeepers to a relationship. Men decide when the relationship happens. Women decide when intimacy happens. If she is a good girl, values um, masculinity, uh, had a good male role model growing up, a good father that set boundaries. She's not going to be laying with every man that she dates. She's going to have some standards. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. And at the end of the day, guys, I mean, it, like if a woman's a virgin, you shouldn't be just taking her virginity. That's just like it's nonchalant. But, but if she's, look, there's like a vast spectrum of women out there, if we're being honest. There's the good girls, which are very, you know, rare and few in between. And then there's like the hoes, the 304s, which is the vast majority of Western women today, unfortunately, especially as they get older, they've all been promiscuous. I've said this before. All women have a skeleton or two in their closet. Some have a graveyard. Um, so this isn't men's fault. This is men indulging in what women are today. Toxic feminism has encouraged women to be promiscuous without impunity, impunity uh, since the advent of hormonal, hormonal birth control. Uh, promiscuity has escalated. Women wanted all of this. Uh, so a vast amount of the weight, a burden of this, if you will, rests solely on the shoulders of women. Uh, women decide when sex happens, not, not men. And then your third uh, point, which should be your remedy to the problem. So let's see if we got something here. Spin plates, don't bang them all. Uh, only date the ones who seem golden, uh, golden respectfully once you have presented, pre-selected all the 21 red flags. This will leave the ones you leave behind in a place where they can still respect men and not be so jaded for the next guy. I love your work, brother. This is basically what all my work says, my friend. <laughs> You're not, tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. This is what you get with the TLDR generation today, right? Too long, didn't read. Didn't want to watch the 90-minute podcast on the topic where he explains it all. So I watched a 27-second TikTok or a 32-second reel on Instagram. A soundbite somewhere, if you will. 
or a little clip that somebody took out of context from a podcast interview that I did on somebody else's channel. Go down the rabbit hole. Go below the waterline and look at the entire iceberg for what it is. This is essentially what I say. Spin plates. Let the cream rise to the top. Choose women that choose you. Like if you're looking for a girlfriend or for wife material, choose women that choose you. And then you go from there, right? Like you vet them along the way with the 21 red flags. Like why do you think I put that chapter in the book? Why do you think I give the chapter away for free to get you guys to the point where you understand what good versus bad looks like? There's nowhere in the book where I just say indiscriminately fuck everything that moves. Let's go to Zumbot. Uh, So his criticism. Unplugged alphas don't need to get married to get access to the best women and all the benefits of a long-term relationship. Uh, Okay. Uh, Did you read the book? There's a chapter that explicitly explains why marriage is a raw deal for men today in most provinces and states. It says this is not true. Were you wrong? So go and get married, my friend, and see how that works out for you. Why don't you go get married in a cool place like maybe New York or even Ontario, a really good place to get married for, for men. Uh, men compete and women choose. That, that's absolutely correct. So you're right about that, as you say. Uh, and the man who will marry is far preferable to the best woman to one who will not. Okay. This is a major point, not a minor one from the lady's perspective. Who cares about the lady's perspective? Are you a man or are you a woman? Is this Zumbot? I'm assuming that you're a man. Um, from the lady's perspective. See, the, the thing that dudes don't understand is that the, the sexual strategies of women and the sexual strategies of men compete. Um, there's a book David Buss put out that I've gone through a couple times now. It's a really good book. It's called The Evolution of Desire. Um, I'm going to slightly misquote the point of the book, but he said something along the lines of... Um, Men and women's strategies have always competed against one another, and there's always going to be differences based on our needs and wants. So if you want to set aside yourself as a man, because I think you open this with unplugged alphas don't. So I'll tell you what unplugged alphas don't do. They don't set aside their priorities to put the priority of a woman ahead of theirs. Am I making myself clear? Uh, Being willing to marry, drawbacks of marriage. The most attractive, most loyal women will not waste their time with men who will not put a ring on it. That's absolutely bullshit. Um, If you think that you have to put a ring on a woman's finger to have her love you, commit to you, uh, be respectful to you, there's divorces every fucking day. Every hundreds of thousands daily probably that had a ring on their finger, they might have seemed loyal initially, became disloyal, and now they're wasting his time. Again, tip of the iceberg versus below the waterline, get your head through the whole thing. Uh, Meaning the unplugged alphas who will not marry get stuck at with lower tier, unattractive and loyal, bullshit. Uh, Women or spinning plates. Three, the solution is to get married, but choose a wife very wisely. Every single guy, my friend, that has gotten married today, tomorrow, yesterday, next fucking week, all thinks that they chose wisely. Every single one of them. Women always refu- always reserve the right to change their mind about a relationship, a marriage, a man at any given time. Your choice today will not continue to be the same several years down the road. There are numerous studies showing the profound physical and mental benefits of happily married men. Those reports are all skewed. I've talked about this before in a podcast or two. These these are tools of the matrix. They are designed to manipulate you and convince you to believe that just manning up. So here's a very good example. What do they tell women? You do what's right for you, girl. What do they tell men? You do what's right. You can't refute this. It's an absolute statement of fact. These studies that say that uh, married men live longer and have mental benefits, uh, blah, 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 that's contingent on happily married men. And as we go back to the study I talked about earlier, the A. Ron Acevedo study that I mentioned in my book, where after eight years, the average uh, couple happiness is less than 13% in love and 3% in bliss. 
How many people that are married do you think are fucking happily married? 20 years, 30 years, 50 years down the road. It's a very low percentage. It's like, it's like saying, I'm going to jump out of a plane and put on this parachute, but it's got a 13% chance that it's going to work out. Are you retarded? Just like starting a business that has a high chance of failure. It's, a, it's about the same chance of failure, actually. Uh, probably a little bit higher for business, if we're being honest. But for those that pull it off, happy marriage with a woman who has genuine burn desire for you is the best of all possible outcomes. Sure. I would agree with that for the 3% of people that it happens to. Uh, Villa here says, my only criticism is how you threw the red pill under the bus. I understand a lot of red pill content creators are charlatans, but the information itself. So let me respond to that. Uh, a few years ago, I decided not to work with anybody from the Mana Swamp. Um, the Mana Swamp is, and I've covered, again, podcasts on this. I haven't thrown the red pill under the bus. I'm just not associating with low lifes and losers. I don't work with losers or people that work with losers. That's my general rule. Unfortunately, I found that the Mana Swamp is filled with losers or people that work with losers. They don't have any standards. Um, he uses the, the, the term here, every sphere will have gris, grifters, uh, but throwing out the baby with the bathwater is not honorable since it was a space that opened your eyes to societal lies. Um, I've said this before, guys. The, the content that you'll get from the Mano Swamp is actually decent. The problem is, is that the people dispensing the advice don't always live that life. Like, for example, you'll have content creators that'll say, um, buy my pickup artistry course and I'll teach you how to bed beautiful women. But what they do is they hire prostitutes at these boot camps. And I've heard this, okay? I've, I've seen either the text threads or I've listened to the recordings of them having the conversations. They'll hire prostitutes for the boot camps before with the instructions that they are to talk to and be positively receptive to the guys that they tell them to approach these women. So they plant seeds in the event, and they tell their uh, students, these geeks, to go and approach these women, and they will get a, 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 a very positive response. They will, they will sleep with them. These pickup artists will bang these prostitutes before they send them into the nightclub to get their go at it, and these guys are getting sloppy seconds. A, a lot of the times, too, they're not discerning with the guys that they provide this information to. Um, it's been said that, uh, giving a lot of, or dispensing red pill advice, you know, if that's a term that you want to use is like giving dynamite to children. They don't have to fucking do with it. And a lot of times part of the reason why they're not successful with women is they've got a lot of social anxiety. They haven't got their life squared away. They're out of shape. They're fat. Uh, they're shaped like a pear. They're not influential. They don't make much money. They have a very basic lifestyle or job. And then they lie to these guys and they say, if you just memorize my lines and say these to these beautiful women, they will sleep with you. And they're left with the illusion by repeating these stupid lines that these prostitutes are real women and that they can replicate this. When they try to replicate this, here's the funny thing. A lot of these guys get thrown in jail. It's happened. Go look it up. There's plenty of cases in, in Las Vegas. So it's not that the information is bad or I threw the red pill under the bus, I just stopped hanging out with losers. I think that if you respect me and my work and the advice that I dispense and who I am as a man, you would look upon that as, that's good. That's, that's the kind of guy that I want to hear an opinion from because he has standards about who he surrounds himself with. Anyway, uh, any recommendation how to prepare for separation? Um, it's not really a criticism. There, there's a course that you can buy. It's a divorce course. Uh, it's less than 200 bucks. Uh, there's several hours of material that will help you uh, navigate how to untie the knot if you're planning to get divorced without totally getting screwed up because most people, they don't plan properly. Women plan for divorces, men don't. They just kind of like go along to get along and it's like a dead fish going downstream. So you can find that on my website. Just go to richcooper.ca and you can find a link to my courses and the divorce course. Um... So this guy here says, I've only disagreed with you once. My voice is really getting cooked on this show. All right. I've only disagreed with you once. Your statement that a man's physique makes him particularly attractive or unattractive. A healthy and fit body should be the default. 
No, but women don't place huge importance on it. Not from what I've observed. Ask the fat guy that's not getting a positive response from women. Ask the guy that's shaped, that's shaped like a pear, not getting a positive response from a, a woman. If you read any evolutionary psychology books on what drives attraction with women towards men, one of the strongest factors, aside from success, wealth, influence, being able to solve problems, all that sort of shit, is a 1.62 golden ratio shoulder to waist. You don't need to be a bodybuilder. You don't need to be a uh, professional athlete. The, the, the swimmer's physique tends to be the ideal form, and it's not very muscular. It's just lean with some muscle, broad shoulders, narrow waist. That is women's preference. So if you like women and you like a healthy body and good blood labs and healthy organs, that, that coincidentally is also aligned with a strong masculine physique. Uh, so I'm not sure what you're observing this with, if your eyes are open or closed, but your statement isn't accurate. Uh, go read some Evo Psych books. However, there is every reason why both men and women should be healthy. Uh, so there is no solution required. Let's all learn at least a little bit about food, health, medicine, necessary and unnecessary. Let's go outside as much. Okay, so I agree with that. Um, but being physically fit, again, this isn't to get chicks. Being physically fit is for you first and foremost so that you live in a healthy body, so that you're productive. Uh, it's been said that testosterone uh, is what makes effort feel good. So a fat, unhealthy, uh, unmotivated guy versus a fit, masculine, somewhat muscular, golden ratio, shoulder to waist sort of thing is generally gonna be more productive and make more money. It's why you don't see very many fat millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires. Some of you be like, oh, there's a picture of Elon Musk out there standing on the back of the boat looking like a fat fuck. Okay, there's, there's your exception to the rule. And then even then, he realized it when people mocked him in that photograph and started taking Ozempic and stuff like that to lose the weight. Um, you're never going to get away from the fact that attraction for men is tightly correlated with a 1.62 golden ratio shoulder to waist. If you don't believe me, go read some Evo Psych books. It'll tell you. Uh, this guy, user, doesn't have a name, says, second edition of Unplugged Alpha is at full price for those who own the, f the first edition. I don't understand your point. Uh, this improves the book for new buyers. However, the general information for the book will be essentially the same. I'm not going to pay a full price for it. You're complaining about something that costs $16, my dude. The updated book has over an hour and a half of extra audio material. Uh, and something like an extra 40 pages. A lot of useful information with field reports. He's saying offer a 75% discount to those that already own the first edition. You can't do that. That's not how Amazon and Audible works, my friend. It's like, dude, it's $16. If you like, Spend the money, get the new edition. Uh, Logan, your podcast is too good. Try watering it down a bit. Joking, okay, um, uh, but whatever. Okay, so this guy's uh, criticism. He says, the definition of an alpha, maybe this is too semantic, but the red pill's misuse of the term alpha is bad PR. And it's inviting a lot of the problems we see in the current mano swamp with how people are acting. I'm gonna tell you something. The vast majority of the guys that create in the mano swamp are not good men or good at being men. Um, I used one example. It's one example of hundreds that existed and I've also broken down many of those examples in prior podcasts about why I left the Mano Swamp. So you can go watch that. Again, this is tip of the iceberg. You haven't gone below the waterline. Um, I see people trying to act out alpha each other for clout. You're right about that. They do. There's a lot of drama in that space. They're like girls. Uh, they'll make hit videos on each other. He's wrong because of this. He's whatever, gay or some of the other. Like... They'll go and do all this stuff, and he's absolutely right, you know, for clout. It's, a, it's not a very professional place, if we're being honest, without clear understanding of what the term even means. I talked about this in my book. You clearly haven't read my book. What I said in the book was, it's not for men to define. It's for society and for women to define. A woman will look at a guy and decide whether or not he's an alpha or a beta. You don't get to go around and be, I'm an alpha male. I've never done that. Go and find a quote in you know one of my videos where I've said that over and over again. It doesn't exist. Uh, women get to decide what they're attracted to, what they find strong and masculine, which generally translates to what an alpha male is. You have to defer to the observations of the fairer sex when it comes to stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's 
you know, it's a lot of back and forth with that. I think a clearer definition coming from you might help since TUA is a quintessential RP book on the topic. You didn't read the book properly, my friend. Read it again. If we define alpha Darwinis Darwinistically, the alpha is the one with a greater number of viable offspring, uh, not just sex opportunities in the animal kingdom. They are basically the same thing. You're going to talk to 20 different guys and get 20 different definitions. You talk to 100 different guys, you're going to get 100 different definitions. At the end of the day, an alpha male is a man that women want to be with and other men want to be. That's what it boils down to. If you want to incorporate the number of children they have, Ishmael the Bloodthirsty is probably one of the most successful alpha males in history, siring over a thousand children with concubines, wives, and mistresses. Um, if that's the yardstick that you want to use, right? Uh, the major task of the Red Pill is to explain intersexual dynamics, both terms of ancient evolutionary biology and modern technology, laws, and social norms. Thus, Red Pillars, blah, 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 blah. So this is a lot of blah, 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 blah. I don't like the way that this term is used. So I'm going to criticize the term, and here's why. Okay, fine. What's his solution? Uh, if alpha is a goal, not necessarily saying whether it should be for everyone, Vet your woman carefully, get a prenup, and make as many babies with her as you can afford to take care of. Alternatively, donate lots of seed and get. Alternatively, donate lots of seed and get a TLC reality show with your 500 kids. Or just don't be an alpha. It's not for everyone. Thanks, Rich. Read your book, and it's very informative. Read the book again, my friend. You, you misinterpreted what an alpha is. I covered it in the book. All right, here's a criticism. Um, Hoff, who tests, I think he means Moff. Hoff. I don't know who Moff is. I'm, I'm assuming Hoff is Moff. Um, he's my co-host on Ladies Night, and he does Moffis hours on Thursdays. Uh, Hoff, who testified about being in the church for a while, should know what Paul said. You need to use the New Testament of what women's role is in the church. I think there was somebody that asked about spirituality and religion and another one, so I'll save that for there. I, I mean, I can't speak for Moff. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Um, you know, that's his experience. And if you don't like something that he said, you can take it up with him and his, uh, podcast on, on Thursdays. Um, probably don't post enough videos to satisfy Dude, I post a video every, there's three videos at least a week on this channel and one to two videos on the EIC channel and the clips channel. I post as many as I can. Um, the only criticism I have is the praise for the dictators, Putin, for example. Okay. I understand they are definitely more in tune with what is actually going on in the world, but that doesn't mean that they do and can potentially do is right. I, the reason why I've, and I haven't praised the dictators. Again, show me a clip where I'm praising dictators. Um, Putin has made very astute observations, which I co-sign 100%. The West is in decline. Wokeness is misery and contributing to the decline. Uh, the confusion about the sexes, letting men compete in women's sports. Um, these are all things that I echo that you're not hearing leaders in the West say. Do you ever hear Justin Trudeau talk about shit like that? Fuck no. Biden? Fuck no. On Easter, one of the holiest uh, dates on the Christian calendar, he decides to betray the vast majority of, uh, you know, the religious population in the United States. And it was it transgender visibility day or something like that. Okay. Like there's no perfect leader, but I don't like the way Western leaders operate. I don't like the, the kowtowing, the pandering to the woke bullshit, uh, the softening of the Western male. I could go on and on things like this don't exist in countries like Russia. You can decide whether or not, you think Russia or Ukraine or Israel or Palestine. I know everybody likes to pick a side. I don't give a fuck. I'm on my side. I don't, I don't give a shit about proxy wars. I don't care. Um, maybe that's where it comes from. Some people get upset if I say something about somebody that they don't like or if they're on the other side of the equation. Um, I think there's a lot of valuable uh, observations and points to take from uh, world leaders lessons. I mean, you can learn shit from Trudeau. You're not going to learn how to, how to run a country properly. You're going to learn how not to run a country properly, for example, or how to treat your citizens. Um, but there's that, uh, marriage is fine. Ceremony ring and everything with zero government involvement. Okay. That's not really a criticism. Oh, here's a spirituality one. Okay. So, uh, is criticism is you seem to not appreciate spirituality. Let's get into that. While religions are constructs of corrupt men, I agree. 
Uh, there can be great benefit to following spiritual practice. There are many who have had a genuine paranormal spiritual experience that cannot be scientifically explained, but you have to be open to the possibility of, if not limited to, uh, precognition, remote viewing, healing, or even TK. What's TK? I don't know. Um, solution. Stop ignoring it since we are much more than ourselves and it will make you more complete. So the other day I said to someone, I said, what am I, what am I world-class at? What am I good at that I'm not talking about publicly? And the answer I got was your spiritual side. So the problem with things like religion and spirituality is it creates a it's a lot of pie in the sky, right? And it's a lot of you got to do what's right for you. If you're Christian, if you're Muslim, if you're Jew, if you're Catholic, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. If, you know, if that's your thing, do it. I don't care if you're in energy crystals and sunning your sphincter or whatever the fuck it is that, you know, people do, whatever it is that they want to subscribe to. Um, I am absolutely spiritual. Um, I'm more agnostic, I would say. Um, I believe very strongly in evolutionary psychology and the data that's been presented there. A lot of the stuff that has been preached to us through, he's using, you know, uh, spirituality and religion. Um, there's a lot of major flaws in religion. And one of the things that I've noticed is whenever I do a podcast, so I did, um, what's that dude's name? So, um, Sovereign Bra. His name's Chase. He's the co-host on the Whatever podcast. Um, he did this um, Twitter space talking about Christianity, Bible bro sort of stuff. Uh, I think he had some criticisms of um, like the red pill and stuff like that. So I thought it was interesting. So I got on a podcast. I think I did it on this channel, if I'm not mistaken. You go back and watch it. I entertain all angles. You know, I really do. Um, and what these Bible bros guys do, you know, the Christians guys always do, and I've seen this more than once, many, many times, in fact, anytime I talk to somebody with strong religious convictions, especially in Christianity, they're like, uh, I'm going to pray for Jesus to save you. You know, you should join our club sort of thing and, you know, preach the good word and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, if you want me to join your club, you better have an impeccable uh, history. Like you got to have an impeccable record. If I'm going to associate my name with your shit, like the reason why I don't want to associate with a mano swamp is because there's so many dipshits in that space. So am I red pill? Sure. Am I going to go to the next mano swamp convention? Fuck no, never at all ever again. Fuck that. Um, so if you want, if you want to recruit members and if you want your club or your band or your clubhouse, where the fuck it is, your religion uh, to recruit new members, you got to make sure, you know, your house is impeccable if you want to recruit members. But most religions, with the exception of, I mean, a handful, maybe, I don't know, like Islam seems to have better practices. It doesn't tolerate wokeness. It doesn't to tolerate toxic feminism. Um, it's got clear like lines in the sand for male roles and female roles. The problem with most Western religions today is they're all cucked. Um, if you, you know, if you take vows in the Catholic church, a lot of uh, congregations will remove certain words from the vows, like to uh, love and obey, to respect, you know, their uh, spouse, um, to placate toxic feminism. So it's like, you know, if you're not going to follow the rule book, then how are you going to recruit people? Um, so it has major flaws. If it works for you, if you find there's benefit in it, go for it. I, I, I'll sit at the same table as you and have dinner with you. I don't care. You can tell me all about your religion. You know, you're going to, you know, I've sat at tables where the first thing that comes out of a dude's mouth is he tells me he's fucking Christian and he doesn't know what my relationship with God is like. And then he tells me about his wife and his family. It's like, whatever, dude, you know, that's cool. Um, if it works for you, do it. So he says this, the solution here is stop ignoring it. I don't so much as ignore it is it's like I do my own thing in that sense. I am spiritual, definitely spiritual and more agnostic than anything else. And if I had to choose a religion, I've said this before, um, if I had to choose one, I think I, the, the values in the religion that make the most sense to me 
it would have to be Islam because everything else is just too fucked up and woke. So there's that. Um, but you do you, my friend. Okay, complaint, single motherhood. Uh, while I agree that they can bring some drama to your life, there's a age cohort that I found out to work. If you vet them carefully, let's say they are a mom with a grown child, then you don't have to be responsible for that child. Most single moms are undateable, but the sample is very nurturing, loving, and caring. It says don't disqualify them completely. See if they want to be the father. See if you want to be the father figure for their children, especially when young especially when young, and if so, run. Okay, so he's basically saying if they want to cuck you, then run. Uh, Others will just want a man to share their life with, uh, need to see if the juice is worth the squeeze. Um, In the chapter of my book, I talk about why dating single mothers is less than ideal. Uh, It brings extra levels of complexity to a man's life. Even a grown child will bring extra levels of complexity to a man's life that doesn't exist uh, in a relationship where she doesn't have children from prior marriage. A good friend of mine was telling me the story the other day. Um, Met a woman, grown-ass child, 18, when he uh, met her. I think he was married to her for six or seven years, something like that. He had nothing but problems. Paying to bail him out, uh, bought him a car, paid for college. He'd end up in jail, just total loser. Like, uh, you don't run into those problems if you deal with women without kids. It's lower hanging fruit. It's, it's, it's generally easier. And single moms have no trouble whatsoever getting guys. Don't think for a minute that I'm saying these women are going to be single forever. I've never said that. I've never said that. There's always some fucking guy out there that will put up with her bullshit. right? But if you have options, if you're a top shelf man, if you're spoiled for choice and you're spinning plates, um, there's only one scenario that I could have thought of that would have made sense to deal with a single mom, which I talk about in my book in the chapter where I discourage inviting a single mom into your life because of the complexities that it bring and all the reasons behind it. You can read the book. Um, so look, man, if you want to uh, you know, get involved in a relationship with a single mom, you do you. I don't give a fuck. It's not me. Okay, so that's uh, that tab. So let's go to the decks. Actually, let me grab the uh, the super chats before I lose track of them. Here. Uh, so thanks to the new members for joining the channel. That's awesome. Got a just a small donation there. Another one. Another new member, Larry. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Small donation. Uh, Blue Mountain says, "Amazing. You have to explain some of this to people. What kind of guy doesn't like fast cars?" Uh, look. I'm shocked today at the amount of guys that aren't interested in fast cars. When I was in high school, it's all any guy thought about was fast cars. It was heavy metal and fast cars. Today, um, because there's like there's just a general softening and weakening and pussification of the Western male, testosterone levels are definitely lowering. I think that the interest in dangerous pursuits like fast cars is diminishing. And there's generally a lower interest in it um, than what there was in the past. But, you know, it is what it is, whatever. Uh, Blue says, I have no respect also for men that can't press their body weight at least one rep. You're not a man if you can't do this. Yeah. Um, You should be able to bench. I mean, if you're an adult male, 245-pound plates, that's 225 in total several times. You should be able to squat your body weight several times. You should be able to curl 75 to 85 pounds several times. Um, you know, it's just basic stuff. It's just man stuff. Um, Claudia says, curious of what you think about men taking years to divorce a female, assuming he's losing a lot of money and dragging his feet. No children is a typical pattern. Um, I think it's probably a situation where there's a lot to lose and they're hoping for a solution later on down the road, which never comes. I don't know, maybe they're hoping that she gets sick and dies or something like that. But I know a lot of guys that just stay in marriages because it's cheaper to keep her. You know, they use that line. It's just cheaper to keep her sort of thing. It's like, okay, you know, if that's what you want to do. Um, I think men are more cowardly when it comes to untying the knot, mostly because the family law incentivizes the uh, individual that makes less money to untie the knot uh, because they get to get the money and his stuff without having to put up with his shit too. Um, men, on the other hand, it's generally men that are paying. Uh, men, on the other hand, end up in a scenario where they're paying for 
uh, monthly maintenance, given away you know half his assets, maybe losing access to his kids a good chunk of the time. So it's much more risky. So I think you know you'll see guys endure or tolerate um, shitty marriages much more than women will. Uh, Michael, spirituality is bullshit. I'm a spiritual person is meaningless. A phrase people use when they want people to think that they're deep and introspective. I mean, I'm a spiritual person. Does that apply to me? Um, look, guys, I've done uh, psilocybin hero trips, uh, DMT. Um, there is something on the other side of consciousness that exists. Uh, anybody that has indulged in that area certainly understands what I'm talking about. Okay, let's grab the next tab. So I had a few here on Twitter. Uh, share screen, X, share. All right, so I posted over here. Uh, no real criticism. Okay, so here's one where he's kind of calling me black pilled. I understand the harshness of your takes. You're trying to prepare young men for the dangers of women and relationships. I do find you near come across as black pilled. There's a chapter in my book where I discourage men from going black pilled and even the deeper, darker rabbit holes of Big Town. Um, so, black pilled is essentially a nihilistic, hopeless sort of view of things. And I'll ad and I'll admit that I'm an enjoy the decline kind of guy, but enjoying it is seeing it for what it is. Basically, if, if I could take a map and put landmines on the map in random places, and then I show you where the landmines are, and I say, here's a map of the world as we live in. Here's the landmines, by the way, so don't step on them if you don't want to get yourself fucked up, but go enjoy yourself. That's not black-pilled. Uh, again, this is tip of the iceberg versus what's below the waterline. This is somebody that's probably watched a few clips, uh, you know, short into it, probably hasn't read my book. You get the idea. Uh, to continue the human species, we still need men procreating, I agree. Raising their offspring, teaching their offspring, and prefer preferably the benefit of said offspring, uh, they witness their parents in a healthy relationship. Uh, it would be good if you could speak on this manner that gives young men some kind of hope. Hope is a terrible plan. Hope is what Tradcon sell. Hope is, oh, just wife up a good religious woman. How did that work out for uh, Crowder, Right? Uh, I fear we're on the brink of collapse if we can't figure it out. I'm a voice. I just have no audience. I'm working on it. It's still brand new. My goals are to build the foundations of goddess here. Da, 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 da. So, you know, it's the typical sort of like Tradcon trope. If, you know, if you just, uh, if you just love her enough and are good enough of a man and do the right thing, then we'll solve all of society's problems. And that's, that's incredibly, um, I mean, you're walking around life with blinders on. You know, you, you want comforting lies. You don't want the cold hard truth. So um, that's not for me. I enjoy life. I have, I have a great relationship with women. Um, I really do enjoy everything that I do. I, I mean, fuck, I was on a rally last week for six days ripping through the, the uh, Appalachian Mountains. I get to travel when I want. Um, I don't let stress get to me. I mean, I live in Canada. I'm one of the most highly taxed places in the world. They locked us the fuck down, uh, you know, for a long period of time. And they tried to force experimental jabs on, on people. And they never apologized for any of it. And, you know, the liberal government just launched their new budget this, uh, you know, today, which includes more taxes. Uh, it is what it is. Um, you take a look at the rules of the game so you understand them. And then you play the game accordingly. That's not black pilled. That's enjoying your life, if I'm being honest. So I disagree with you. Um, I see you in particular as a pioneer in this reconquista of our Western culture. You're breaking the ice so others can follow. What I don't like is that everybody can be an entrepreneur here, narrative. At least in uh, European Union, the system is in total opposition to small business. Um, everybody can be an entrepreneur. Not everybody should be an entrepreneur. Um, I've often said that things like, what did Kevin O'Leary say? A salary is the drug they give you to forget about your dreams. Um, basically, being an employee, like your employer has a, has a subscription on you by paying you a salary monthly to perform a task, and they, and they make a lot of money on you. That's why they hire you to do things. Um, 
there's a lot of profound problems with being an entre- being a employee today, and it's never been easier to be an entrepreneur today. Uh, I have a course, the School of Entrepreneurship. It's not open for enrollment right now. I'm going to open that next month. Um, but it breaks down the best ways to set up a business. If you're on my email list below, you'll get notification when it opens for enrollment. Um, but entrepreneurship is the best path to freedom, wealth, uh, self-control. If you set up the business properly, you have the ability to maneuver. You're not tied to going to the location, punching your clock, doing your job, punching it, going home. Um, in the event that there will be another experiment that the world governments try to uh, bomb us on, like they did a few years ago with the scandemic. Um, I was never forced to take an experimental jab. I can't tell you how many people emailed, DM'd, called into my shows like, Rich, I don't want to take this thing. My employer's forcing it on me. I have a mortgage to pay and a wife and kids and I don't have money saved up. I don't know what my options are. It's like, dude, what am I supposed to tell you? Right? You're, you're fragile in the state where you have to rely on an employer for your income to pay your mortgage and your livelihood, like all of this shit, like this, this fucking web of lies that were sold, go out and get a job and, you know, buy a house and have a mortgage and a white picket fence and, you know, pay your taxes and all this bullshit. It's like guys that are entrepreneurs with independent, with location independent businesses understand the freedom that they have. If you don't want to be an entrepreneur, don't. I encourage you to entertain it. I encourage you to explore it. Uh, I'm not particularly gifted in any area of fucking life. It just, it just so happens that I am more resolute, uh, that I have more gumption than, you know, than the average guy, which is why I was successful in business, which is why I was named three years back to back as one of Canada's fastest growing companies with Total Earth Freedom, which I started in 2003. Um, it's why my YouTube channel is where it's at and I do what I do and the community members that I have uh, are able to enjoy the things that we, you know, we get together and, and deal with. Um, it's freeing. It really is freeing. So I get that you don't like it, but just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's wrong. Marinate on that. Uh, anyway, uh, Tenacia says the constant focus on women's shortcomings rather than encouraging men to take ownership and lead. When do I not tell men to take ownership and lead? Go back and watch any of the call-in shows and it's like any guy that refuses to take ownership makes up some bullshit story about the results that they get in life and why it's somebody else's fault and I tell them to shut the fuck up and take ownership for their life. Again, tip of the iceberg, a whole bunch of stuff below the waterline. It's one of these guys that probably watch a short clip somewhere and uh, you know, made a decision on that. Sheba, I got a little uh, crypto bro here. He says, hey Rich, I'm Carl, age 23. It seems that you sometimes kick men when they're down. I could be wrong, but retweets of Reddit posts that I'm sure are fake. I'm pretty sure they're not fake. That's why I only share the ones that seem real. I read them and I also read the responses to them to see what they're all about. I do this on Twitter from time to time because I get notifications on my phone from trending posts. Appear to be sneering at others' misfortune. It's a lesson. Don't be a crybaby about it. It's a lesson. Would it be better to lift them up with encouragement instead? Oh, like what? Well done, you fucking retard making these stupid choices. Well done. You know, try not to do it again. Or should I call out the mistakes that they made? This is how you learn. It's always faster and cheaper to learn from the mistakes of others and to make them yourselves. Do you understand? This is what I do with this. But this today, see, again, you know, we have a softer, weaker society and culture. And men today will get offended. I mean, you know, dude's got a cryptocurrency in his um, uh, avatar. Uh, you know, men today that have these avatar of dog foxes or whatever the hell that is, a Shiba dog, will get offended because you point to the facts. You're a fucking idiot. You made these bad choices, which led to these results. If you want to avoid these results, don't make these bad choices. Those are the solutions that I offer, right? Anyway, let's keep moving on. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's go to this one over here. So this is from the Unplugged Alpha community tab. Uh, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So the first one. Um, 
Criticism, wrong, uninteresting companions or guests, moth generals and ladies nights. Okay, here we go. Reduces the quality of your work channel. A NR of these men are self-complained. What's an NR? Is this supposed to be a number? Okay, so let's go with a number of these men are self-complained alphas, self-proclaimed alphas, but also unfit, uninteresting, boring, in some cases overweight. I'm a highest 10% income earner in my country, Western. I have a 1% VO2 max globally within my age range, also fit. Uh, also more fit aesthetically than rich. I doubt it, bro. I fucking doubt it. Put on some gloves and let's get in the ring and have a fight. <laughs> I, dude, I go to the gym. I go to the dojo. I look at guys my age and they can't fucking hold a candle to the shit that I do. This is just like dick swinging. Like, I'm not even going to read the rest of this, dude. Choose guess widely like George or Ryan Terrible. Dude, don't tell me how to run my show. Don't, don't watch it if you don't like it. If you don't like Moff, then don't watch Moff. I like Moff. I like Moff. So if you don't like him, then don't watch him. I don't give a shit. Uh, not really a criticism. Doesn't like Ladies Night. You know, Ladies Night's a funny show because you get guys that are like, I don't like it. And you get guys that are like, I fucking love it. I see what's going on in real time. And that's the intention of the show. Um, we're not doing bimbos that are handpicked from OnlyFans or, you know, you can put them at a, a table like the other podcasts and be like, gotcha, bitch. Um, the whole point of our show was to have real conversations with real chicks. Um, Moff does the recruiting. Sometimes we get women on there that have an OnlyFans, but the vast majority of them are just like real everyday chicks. Um, we don't filter out and say, you know, we'll take these ones over these ones. We, we just take chicks that are interested in having conversations and we show them past episodes and then have a discussion and the guys that get it like the guys that see the code in the matrix that are unplugged they're like i fucking love this show i see exactly what you talk about in your book and your other episodes unfolding in real time in front of my eyes and i don't need to throw them off the show i mean i did it once because that psychopath lawyer only fans check jasmine you can go look it up if you want to see that stupid check um, but I generally almost never have thrown anybody off the show. Um, there's, there's disagreements, um, there's differences of opinions, but I personally like it when you can sit there without me explicitly stating the fact, like I don't have to call them bimbos without me stating guys get it. And they say that they get it in the comments and they break down why they get it in their comments. Uh, anyway, so you don't like the show. Debating some of these women is beneath you and takes away from the strength of your brand. Let, let the whatever guys deal with that shit. I don't, I don't do the sit down at a table podcast show. If you've watched any of the sit down at a table podcast show versus what we're doing, uh, you can see that we have a vast um, demographic of guests on the show. We've had women on from New Zealand, Australia, Switzerland, Latvia, uh, Bulgaria, England, Ireland, Scotland, South America, the Caribbean, like all over the world, my dude. These other sit down to the table shows are all local girls from, they just recruit them, right? You know, locally. So, um, and they're generally bimbos too, right? Like, you know, we've had some pr like pretty good women on some of our shows that have added a lot of value. Um, one, all men and women are very stereotyped. All men should like motorcycles and combat sports. Women should like cooking, cleaning, and having kids. Okay, so his complaint is that I stereotype the genders. This isn't realistic. Some men like cooking and hate combat sports, whilst the opposite can be true for women. Okay, you need to allow for more individuality and not make sweeping generalizations about people, their likes, and their behaviors. So I operate in a very distinct set of categories. Uh, I'll say this again, there's exceptions to rules. It doesn't disprove a rule. Um, the reason why, so we'll talk about motorcycles and combat sports, you know, as an example, because there's a chapter in my book where I talk about, I think men should at least at some point in their life own a motorcycle and two, learn combat sports. The reason for that is most men don't know how to fight for shit. I guarantee you the vast majority of guys could not defend themselves or their family or their kids if somebody broke into their house. Dude breaks into my house, I'm hopping out of bed, grabbing my fucking weapons that I've hit along the way, and I'm gonna put them in his fucking face. If I get into a, a situation where I gotta throw hands and the smoke's needed, I can throw hands, I can fuck somebody up. The guy that I fought when I did my boxing match was 20 years younger, a couple inches taller, um, and a few like 
several pounds heavier, probably 20, 25 pounds heavier. Uh, I'm not afraid of combat. And I'll tell you this, it was years that I was bodybuilding and picking up heavy shit, putting it down and build a strong mask and physique. I'm a strong guy. Like I can move a lot of weight, but I didn't know how to fight. So it dawned on me like, look, if I am strong, but I don't have a fight, what's the point in having the fucking muscle so I can stand there in a mirror and go, oh, that looks fucking good. It's, it's, it's pointless. And I think men miss this point, which I think this guy over here is missing as well. So if you don't like combat sports, I don't give a fuck. Don't do them. But don't come crying to me when shit hits the fan and you're a pussy and you get beat up. It's incumbent upon men to learn combat, strength, um, for yourself, for the protection of your... A lot of people talk about the prote- like family and have kids and family. 90% of these motherfuckers couldn't protect their family if shit hit the fan. It's a fact of life. Learning combat sports is important. In addition to that, we know that women like violent men. More specifically, women like men with the capacity for violence. Walk softly, carry a big stick. That's what chicks dig. So there's the added benefit of, added benefit of not only being able to defend yourself and have combat skills, but also being more attractive to women. Uh, the thing with the motorcycle is, so I rode bikes from, I don't know, 18 to about 30 or so, went through several different sport bikes. I talk about it all in detail in a chapter in my book. And bikes are a form of transportation that are incredibly fun. They're therapeutic. They're very cheap to get around on. They don't use a lot of gas. They're incredibly fast. They give you a rush. Uh, Women love being on the back of a bike. Women don't get excited about getting in your fucking car. Like even a nice car. uh, You can have a $300,000 exotic car and a $15,000 super bike or a nice Harley or some shit like that. And they're generally more enthusiastic about the motorcycle over the car. Um, So from the perspective of entertainment, fun, therapy, da 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 chicks, like all those things, they're they're very interesting. Now, look, if you like cooking and cleaning and being Mr. Mom, I don't give a fuck, do it. But there's masculine roles and there's feminine roles. And I think when you try to blend or you overlap them too much, that's where you get into weird fucking areas where you get men competing into women's sports, right? Or you get these mentally ill, Ill people on social media that are all talking about, you know, they're transformers or whatever. So I'm not going to allow for more individuality and all that bullshit. I'm not a, fuck that. I speak facts. Uh, oh, he's got, oh, he has several parts. Part A, part B, part C. D. Okay, so E. Oh, wow. This guy has a lot of fucking complaints. Okay. B, uh, saying that adultery is okay when men do it, but advocating for divorce when women do it, okay? Adultery is not okay for everyone. To say that it's okay to split up a family and expose children to potentially harmful step relatives when women cheats does not have a man, blah, blah, blah. Just because men can have sex without any emotional attachment doesn't mean they should. Discourage cheating for both parties. No good comes of it. If you can discourage it, if you can't discourage it, say nothing. Again, this is a stick your head in the sand sort of moment, like, I believe this too. The vast majority of the plug-in, you know, believe this too. Like 90, 95% of the population think uh, no good comes out of it. If you can discourage it, then don't do it. Uh, discourage cheating for both parties at all, at all means. But throughout history, it's been a feature of men and women's sexual strategies. Men want to scatter seed as far and wide as possible. Women want the best man that they can get. I don't say adultery is okay. What I say, so, you know, to the example of advocating, um, you know, for divorce or when women do it, like they're basically assholes. Um, A guy can love his family. Like I had this idiot call into my show the other day, this chick, Lynn, Lynn the liar, you know, we'll call her. So let me break this down. A guy can love his family, his wife and his kids, um, attend weddings, events, birthdays, travel, Christmas, all that bullshit. He's a high value guy. Hot women are going to hit on him. Maybe he makes a mistake and steps out and has some exercise when he's at a conference or some shit. She finds out about it. This is where it goes upside down. If he loves his family, attends all the events, takes care of the kids and all that sort of stuff. He made a mistake one time and she divorces him, takes half of his shit 
alienates him from the kids, exposes the kids to a new stepfather, potential stepbrothers, and even rape and things like that that happen along down, down the way. She's the asshole. He made a mistake, but she's the fucking asshole for untying the knot and doing all those things. And I'll die on that hill. I'll argue anybody to the point on that one. You're an idiot if you think that women should be doing that. Because the difference between men and women is the guy can go do it with a bimbo and forget about her. Doesn't even fucking acknowledge her. Who cares? Whatever. Women do it with guys that they like. It's So when a guy cheats, a woman betrays. Here's the difference. What does a woman ask a guy when he steps out? She's going to ask him, did you love her? Because she's not so concerned with the act of sex. But when a woman steps out, first thing the guy wants to know is, did you bang him? What did you do? Did you have an orgasm? How many times did you do it? He doesn't even care if she likes him. He wants to know about the act of sex. It's a totally different thing. And the thing is, is that women don't generally do it just for sex. Like they won't cheat on a husband that they love and adore and just go out and randomly have sex. Some women will, like that fucking psychopath that called in on my show, she's like, well, women do it too. You don't know what you're talking about. You're delusional. No, they don't. I know for a fucking fact, women will not step out on a man, vast majority of the time, we're talking like 99% of the time, there's probably gonna be some mentally ill chicks that do it. But if a woman sees a guy as her hypergamous best option, she's not looking to bang other dudes. It just generally doesn't fucking happen. Do women do it? Do women cheat on their husband? Do men keep their wives around after they cheat? Yeah, but it's for totally different reasons. I'm not saying adultery is okay. I've never said that. You're putting words in my mouth. What I'm saying is it's different when men and women do it. And I think when women untie the knot and fuck men over just to teach him a lesson and steal his kids and half his wealth because he fucking had some sex with a bimbo for like 12 minutes, it's probably one of the most understated, f I'm the only guy in this fucking space that's stepping up saying something about this. So let's go to C. Uh, you seem unable to back up what you say with any kind of data, providing links to studies referring to specific books. I've linked everything. Anytime I talk about a study, it's fucking linked in the description of the video. Again, this is some guy that hasn't watched any of my videos. He's watched 27 second clip, or maybe one short somewhere and that's it. Uh, anytime I've mentioned any kind of study, you can go through my entire catalog on my videos. I'm like, this is the study, this is what it says, here's the highlight, and I'll break it down. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna fucking like dig up the study and link it in every subsequent podcast that I br bring up if I've already dealt with it. You can go do your own fucking research and I tell you where to find it in the video, so you're lazy. Let's go to D. Uh, your advice to men attracts exactly the kind of women you don't want in your life. Okay, so my advice attracts shitty women, apparently. <laughs> this guy's not a critic. He's an unintelligent hater. Improving your looks and swelling your bank account is mainly going to attract gold. Oh, here we go. The same. We heard this before, you know, with the car argument. We don't need women like this around. Okay, I'm going to skip this because I've already addressed this. This is just retarded. Uh, e, stop having such uninteresting guests. Moff, Caroline. Who the fuck's Caroline? Oh, Caroline was the um, uh, follow-up to the week before because there was more that she wanted to dive down on her rabbit hole. Yet here you are in my comments writing and watching these fucking podcasts, right? These people are boring and have no career. Did you even fucking watch the episode? It was one of the best rated episodes that we had in the comments from people. Yeah, you can tell Moff was picked as a kid, was picked on as a kid because he seems so bitter against everyone. How exactly is an example of male excellence? Limit the amount. Okay. Dude, just if you don't like my shit, don't watch it. Uh, doing the work. Okay, so this is a doing the work thing. You mentioned the importance of doing the work, but you take shortcuts with stuff like exogenous testosterone to help your physical condition and performance. This does not seem to be doing the work, but taking a shortcut. I take issue because it is a shortcut and isn't doing the work, not to mention potentially brings harm. My solution would be to describe how it is conducive to do work and goes with being the top one, five or even 5% of men. I also wouldn't do a treatment like that. By the way, fan of your content and book, appreciate what you've done, da da da. I, I've not said take shortcuts like exogenous testosterone. So 
It always amazes me how things that I have said over and over again take out of context, get taken out of context. It's it's always surprising to me. It's like, fuck, I don't know how much more impeccable I can be with my word when I speak of things. Has my opinion evolved and changed over time since I've started uploading to YouTube? Probably, not by much. And even if it has, it's like, I was wrong about that. This is now the correct angle. Um, I was wrong about the Mano Swamp. I've been honest about that, and I've told you why. But anyway, stuff like exogenous testosterone. So I've said this very, very clearly. I don't think guys should take TRT unless your blood labs suggest that it would enhance your life and optimize you. I'm going to say this again. From my own personal experience, I've been natural my entire life till about, I don't know, my early 40s, let's say. It became obvious to me for several months I was going to the gym. I was not making or even maintaining. I was getting, I was starting to store more belly fat. I was less motivated. My sleep wasn't as good. I wasn't waking up with morning wood. My libido had declined. Uh, I went to the doctor. We did blood labs. We tried to deal with it in natural ways. There was no response. Then I went looking for TRT because I know friends that have used it. I did my research on it. I read article after article. I watched video after video. I talked to professional after professional. And it made sense for me. And it makes sense for a lot of other guys too. If you don't need it, don't use it. If it can enhance your life and help optimize you, then use it. I think that there's areas where it's like guys will take shortcuts. If you're trying to get on TRT in your fucking 20s, what? Come on, bro. Why? Like, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. There is a natural decline in male testosterone as you get older. And uh, what do you say? Potential harm. So it's true that you may not live quite as long uh, if you've got optimized levels of testosterone. There was a study. Actually, one of the most interesting studies uh, was the one on the Korean monks. And they were uh, basically eunuchs, okay? So they lived something like 25 to 30% longer. Uh, oh, you want me to s cite the study and link it? Fuck off. I'm not going to dig it up. Uh, you can go look at Leo and Longevity on his YouTube channel. He's dead now, but his videos are still there. And look up the video on Korean monks. There's a study which he cites, and there's a link to it over there. So you go look it up. Um, Testosterone is nephrotoxic to your kidneys, um, and you will probably not live as long. So these, so these eunuch monks live something like 25% longer than the average male during the course of the data collected. But they're eunuchs. I Personally, I would rather live 25% shorter, be healthy, be strong, have a fully functioning dick and sex life. Everything's you know going, I've, I'm motivated, I'm doing things in my life, putting a dent to the universe. If you don't want that, if if you want to be suboptimal, then stay so. I don't I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Um, people ask me for advice on things that they're stuck on and things that aren't going well in their world, and I do the best that I can to provide a legitimate, unbiased opinion that's useful, uh, potentially enhancing, and the vast majority of it's fucking free. The vast majority, like, again, there's like probably 1,490 videos on the EIC channel, hundreds, maybe over 1,000 videos on this channel. It's all free shit. Um, so I don't understand the criticism of exogenous testosterone. It's a game changer for guys that have declined in their own body's ability to produce testosterone. And if you read the book Estrogeneration by Dr. Anthony J, and Dr. Anthony J, by the way, is on TRT himself. Um, his entire book breaks down all the sources of environmental estrogen that lower your body's ability to produce uh, sorry, testosterone and increase the amount of um, mimicking compounds that act like estrogen in your body. It's one of the reasons why we're so weak as a society today. One source out of, I think there's five or six that are mentioned in detail in his book is there is um, estrogen in the drinking water. Uh, a lot of women are on birth control. The vast majority of women are on birth control in the 20 to 40 age range category, even like teenage girls uh, are on birth control, hormonal. 
they go to the bathroom, they go pee. That water goes through sewage treatment. They clean it up. They get all the particles, the toilet paper, the poo, and all that sort of stuff. And then they put it back in the water supply. You can't filter out hormones. Hormones are microscopic. If you want to filter out hormones, you need a five-stage reverse osmosis water filtration system, uh, a distillery system that distills water, something like that if you want to get the hormones out of the water. vast majority of people drink tap water. They make their coffees and tea with it. They boil their pasta with it. Not a lot of people use a five-stage reverse osmosis water filtration system. That's one source. It's in the drinking water, and the government fucking knows it's in there. I asked him on the podcast. He visits these centers. Do they know that the estrogen is in the water? Yes, they know. They know it's in there. They're not doing anything about it. So the notion of exogenous testosterone, um, you know, and the importance of doing the work and all that sort of stuff, you get the point. I got to run soon, so let me do one more. Um, Let's see here. Ladies night, book is spot on. Big fan, I think it's unprofessionally invite, Uh, whatever. Specifically criticizing and watching sports. Oh, let's do the sports one, yeah, okay. So we'll make this the last one and then we'll wrap up. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to um, uh, take call-ins today, guys. I could do this. This is a three-hour show with all the fucking criticism. A lot of it starts, stops, you know, will start to overlap if you get the idea. Uh, anyway, so specifically criticizing the watching of sports is unproductive, saying why watch other people chase excellence and you shouldn't do it. That's my preference. That's my take on it. So that's his criticism. Uh, why he's criticizing it uh, by this logic, don't watch any form of entertainment. Uh, then since it's technically watching others chase excellence, sports is just entertainment. Sports isn't just entertainment. Um, Game of Thrones is entertainment. Uh, Vikings is entertainment. Going out and buying season's tickets and $300 jerseys with some other motherfucker's name on the back that you're wearing. Your girlfriend or wife is even wearing a jersey with another man's name on her back, cheering him on while you're buying all the you know $17 bags of popcorn at the stadium. Uh, and spending all your painting your face and all that shit, spending all your time and going, we won. You didn't win shit. You're just in a fucking stadium cheering them on. Um, it's very different from entertainment in the sense of watching a series like Game of Thrones, for example. Um, so I think you're wrong about that. Fun things, including entertainment, are fine to consume, assuming they aren't impeding your progress in life and done excessively. The vast majority of guys that watch sports uh, aren't on a real path to doing something with their life that's significant, if we're being honest. Um, They're very involved in like fantasy league sports is another one that just doesn't make sense to me. Like, you know, you spend, I don't know, it's a buy-in pool, 20, 50 bucks or something like that. You got a bunch of your friends together. You create a fantasy league team, you know, pretend a pie in the sky team. And then you fucking argue about who's got the best team and who stole who's best player on the roster And all of that, uh, hours and days of fucking work to win some little bullshit plastic trophy. And I'm making fun of my dad and my brother in a sense because they have this little fucking gay soccer trophy, football trophy, (coughs) from their fantasy league game. And they spend all of these hours and stats and arguing um, to get like, I don't know, $250, like some pool payout or something. It just doesn't make any sense to me. There's far better things that you could be doing with your time. There's more interesting forms of entertainment than wearing the wearing a f- several hundred dollar jersey with another dude's name on the back of it. I'll wear a fucking jersey with my name on the back of it. That's it. I'm not I'm not like it doesn't make sense to me as a good use of time. Um if you enjoy it, enjoy it. I don't give a fuck. It's generally not a good use of time, right? What color is your McLaren? What color is your Porsche, right? Um it is what it is. Um, let me see what else we got in here as far as, uh, super chats before I bounce. So I don't miss anything. Um, let me remove this from the screen. Damn. I gotta get going, man. We're way over on this one. You guys enjoying the show? Give it a like. Let me know. Uh, Rich on the adultery subject. Would you personally be more or less mad if your LTR had an affair with a woman out of curiosity? Keep it the good work. Uh, if she's going to get involved with a woman, uh, I'm there. It's a threesome. It's not a, uh, you know, like it's, it's cheating. I don't care if it's a guy or a girl. It's, you know, um, 
if there's another girl that's brought into the equation, I'm there. It's going to be a uh, menage a trois, if you will. Um, uh, Rich, you're, you're a the phenomenal orator. Thanks, Lisa. Appreciate it. Um, four guys on watch. You and your buddies can spend the weekend camping, hiking, fishing while looking for Bigfoot and leave the more masculinity uh, and leave with more masculinity than you would church on Sunday. City sheep live in a tunnel world vision. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we're doing next month in May as a test of ourselves, and you can follow this on social media when I post the, the, the photographs. I think there's about 18 of us uh, that are going in a deep woods uh, canoe backpacking trip uh, up north. So why are you telling guys to go in the deep woods? The bears and the cougars are going to get them. The mountain lions. It's like, fuck, man. You want to you wanna bubble wrap? Your, don't ride motorcycles. They're too dangerous. Why don't you just bubble wrap yourself and live in your fucking basement and watch sports all day? <clears throat> Wrong channel, bro. Men need to test themselves. Learn how to fight. Learn difficult things. Learn how to make money. Chase excellence. Put a dent in the universe. Question shit. I am, I am what I am. I can't change that. Anyway, I'm going to run the ad real quick and then we'll wrap up the show. Thanks guys for watching. Do all the stuff for the algorithms. Peace out. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top